Recently, I filmed myself installing one of these LED panel lights in a ceiling in the basement. This is a project you can take on as a DIYer because it doesn't require any special tools or a ton of skill, and it can dramatically improve the lighting in a room. I started with a wire dropped through the correct size hole that was already cut in the ceiling. Now this could be from a previous light fixture or a new wire that either you or an electrician has pulled and cut that hole for the size of light that you're installing. In my situation, I had run a new wire there through a four inch hole, which is the size of light that I was installing. Now, after you run the wire, you should cut about two and a half to three inches of sheathing off of the cable and each of the black and white wires should have about one half to three quarters of an inch of insulation stripped off. This prepares it so that it's going to be able to go into the housing for the light, but not have too much wire in there that it causes a problem trying to fit everything in and close the top again. Before I started installing the lights, I filmed a short segment and I explained the three features that I really like about the lights that I use. These are the type of puck or panel lights, LED panel lights that I like to use. The great thing is, is they fit inside the drywall. They're only half an inch or less thick. Now this particular brand has three features that I like that I haven't seen in some of the others that I've used. First is once you open up this uh, housing here, there's a switch here where you can change the color temperature. So you can set it to the, what you like, whether it's a warm white, cool white, whatever you like. Second is, is that the knockout holes on this box are both on the side and on the end. The end is what I suggest you use because it makes it easier when you have to fit it up into the hole. And then the final thing is these pushing connectors. These pushing connectors are great for pushing the solid Romex wire in and you don't have to have your own wire nut. It takes up a lot less space than a wire nut or a Wago does. So those are the three reasons I like using these lights. Now this is a four inch size. Uh, but I think you can probably get them in other sizes as well. Before I show you how I installed it, here are the tools that you're going to need. And I'll link to some of these tools in the description down below. First, the LED panel lights. Now, I use ones that are available in Canada. In the description below, I'll link to ones that's, that are similar that are available in the US. If you can't get the ones that I'm recommending or you want a different sized light, look for lights that have those three features that I talked about. First, they have the ability to put the cable in through a connector on the end of the box. Second, adjustable light temperature, because this gives you flexibility. And then third, the push-in connectors. Next, you're going to need a utility knife. I like my Olfa knife and wire cutters. I use my Milwaukee six-in-one electricians wire cutters to be able to strip the sheathing and to strip the end on each of those black and white wires. Then you're going to need needle nose pliers. You'll see when I install it, this makes it much easier to make sure that the cable is properly seated in the connector. And of course, you're also going to need one of these plastic cable clamps. This goes into the box of the housing and secures the cable to the housing to make sure it's not gonna fall out or rub against the metal housing. The last thing before we get started, safety first. Turn the light switch off and then turn the circuit breaker off to this light. You need to make sure there's no power running to that switch. If this switch is in a multi-switch box, make sure that you have turned off the power to the circuits for all of those switches. If you're not sure what circuit breaker to turn off, I'll link up above and in the description below to a video that I have that allows you to locate the correct circuit breaker for any circuit in your house. Okay, let's go back to the basement and I'll show you how to install one of these LED panel lights. The lights come with the box and the wire and then there's a connection here. So uh, remove this connection and put the light in a safe spot because when you're doing the wiring, you don't want it to fall off. So remove that, put it in a safe spot first. So the knockout that I like to use is the one on this side. And the reason for that is, is because the black and white wires inside the box are on this side of the box. So if you bring in the cable over here, it makes it easier to hook everything up. So we're gonna start by taking this knockout out and putting in a plastic cable clamp so that the 
cables are held securely to the box and then we can wire it up inside. Remember the switch in here is the color temperature and you may want to adjust that now if you know the color temperature that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this knockout from this side here. And I'm going to use a plastic uh, cable clamp and move the wires out of the way first. Make sure those are out of the way. Check which end we're supposed to put it in. So we'll put it in this way. And the way these cable clamps work is you compress them a little bit, they fit inside the hole, and then when you release them, they expand out and now it's nice and solid. So now our next step is to take our uh, cable, push it through this hole to get it inside the box. I just wanted to pop back in for a second. If you have two wires coming from the hole, then what you need to do is to use two of the cable clamps, put one in each of the holes on the end of the box, and then push one wire through each of those cable clamps into the box. The cable clamps are rated to be able to have two cables pushed through them. You'll see that in the specifications on the package. But what I found is, is that while it is possible to do that, it's really hard. It's very hard to get both of those cables pushed through without deforming the box because you're pressing so hard against it. Now, if you have to do that, then certainly do it, but do it carefully to make sure that you have both of the cables in through either the two cable clamps or one cable clamp if that's the situation that you're running into. Okay, let's get back to the installation. So move these uh, internal cables out of the way. Get all these pushed together. And then on the uh, cable clamp, you'll see there's a, a hole on this one, it's on this side. So I'm going to move the cables onto that side press them in, you can start to see them come through there. You wanna keep pressing, you might need to move the, them out of the way from hitting this end of the box. Keep pressing until, now it gets a little harder when that sheathing is there. But you have to keep pressing until you see a quarter inch at least of sheathing inside the box. So we can see the sheathing inside the box now. Our cable is in. And now what we do is we start hooking up each of these individual wires to the wires in the box. So there's the green for the ground, white for the neutral, and black for the hot. So now we have to hook up each of our wires. And what I usually do is I'll use my needle nose pliers to grab the wire and then I'll push it into one of the holes. Now there are three open holes on each of these and Pick it, whichever one you want. I usually pick one that's beside the existing wire as opposed to di diagonal. So I'll push it in until it can't go further and then I'll look to see, can I see the wire in there? And when I can, I know I've got it in all the way. So I'll do the ground first and then I will push that into the box. Then I'll do the same thing Black out of the way. The same thing for the neutral. Pushing it in all the way. I find if I do it with my hands, I don't have as much control and uh, I just found it easier with the, the needle nose pliers. And then for my black, my hot wire, push that in all the way and put that in. And now our wiring inside is done. I've set the temperature, make sure you do that before you close the lid. Now we can close the lid. Once the lid is closed, we can test the light and when it's tested, we can push it back up in the hole. To test the light, I'll uh, turn the breaker on, go over to the switch. And it works, excellent. And I'll turn the power off again. I will uh, disconnect the light and put that off to the side. Now, the box just slides up into the uh, ceiling cavity. Put it on whichever side sort of works best for, for you and it will have this little tail sticking out. 
The two ends have uh, a little ridge inside that you have to line up to get this to connect. And then most of these types of lights also have a uh, collar that you screw on to securely put it in there. So I've done that, I've screwed on the collar. Now what I can do is uh, put the one tab up into the ceiling move my other tab up and press my light into its final spot. Sometimes the hole might be a little tight. And now I have my light installed. Turn the breaker on and my light switch. And now I have my lights. That's how you can upgrade the lighting in a room with these LED recessed panel lights. If there are other beginner DIY electrical projects that you'd like to tackle and you want me to do a video to show you how to do it, put them in the comments below and I'll consider it for a future video. Here are some other videos I've done on electrical DIY projects that I think you'll find interesting. Thanks for watching.